You are likely watching this video today because you are either curious about dry eye or have been diagnosed with it by one of your doctors. What we'd like to do in this brief video is explain a little bit about the science of dry eye and what opportunities are available to provide you with some relief at our practice. We start the process with a screening assessment and let our findings influence how your care is managed. Your doctor will likely have you fill out a well-researched instrument known as the SPEED2 questionnaire, which helps us appreciate a baseline for how much these symptoms are affecting the quality of your life. We will then review your tear film stability to assess the health of your tear film. Finally, we will very likely perform some diagnostic infrared imaging to assess the functioning of your tear glands. Positive results from any of these three initial screenings will lead to a more detailed clinical exam. Under a slit lamp, your doctor will carefully examine the anatomy of your eye to assess it for abnormalities. This involves careful inspection of the eyelids, eyelashes, blink reflex, cornea, and expressibility of the tear glands. There are a lot of reasons your eyes could be, quote, dry. The term is a little nebulous. In some situations, the doctor may tell the patient they have dry eye when the patient stares in disbelief, says, doctor, my eyes water all the time. How could that be? A better description may be ocular surface dysfunction. Frequently, one of the most common causes of dry eye is due to poor performance of the meibomian tear glands, which can in turn lead to increased reflex tear production, like the patient was describing. Other common causes can include aqueous tear deficiency, where your body simply doesn't produce enough tears, or there are other considerations, such as allergies, abnormalities of the eyelid anatomy, and surface irregularities of the cornea that can cause dry eye as well. As mentioned earlier, we would like to discuss the science of dry eye, so let's do that now. There are three elements of the tear film which should be in natural bounce with each other to create a healthy ocular surface. These three elements from the surface of the cornea outwards include the mucinous layer, the aqueous layer or watery layer, and the oil layer, and they're all well demonstrated in the accompanying figure. Each plays a critical role to vision and comfort. The mucinous layer acts as a backbone for coating the cornea, while the aqueous layer provides nourishment. Finally, the oily layer produced by the meibomian glands function as a protective shield which prevents the early evaporation of the other components. Many studies estimate that 70 to 80% of patients suffering with dry eye symptoms deal with what's known as evaporative tear loss, which essentially means that the meibomian glands are not functioning properly. When that's the case, the eye can feel irritated and your vision can in turn suffer. We have imaging capabilities which can assess the vitality of your meibomian glands in a very objective way. The accompanying figure shows a series of photos which progress from normal gland functioning to total dropout leading to severe dry eye. Another objective exam finding we look for is the tear film stability. We will put a special drop of fluorescein dye in the eye, ask you to blink twice before refraining to blink for 10 to 15 seconds. During this time, we examine carefully how long it takes for dry spots to develop. Most patients should not develop dryness within the first 10 seconds. If that is the case, we may write in the patient's chart that he or she has a decreased tear breakup time. We will also study the surface of the eye with corneal topography. This technology gives us a sense for the overall smoothness of the ocular surface by reflecting light off the cornea and back into a camera. If you have dry eye, in many cases, we'll have to treat it in order to plan correctly for cataract or LASIK surgery because the measurements we take would be erratic if used on dry eye patients. The accompanying figures demonstrate how much smoother the surface can become pre and post treatment, which therefore allows for medical or surgical planning and a better outcome. What are your treatment options? We tend to break them into three different categories of treatment based on the individual patient condition. Category one, in this situation, artificial tears are prescribed to restore bounce to the ocular surface. Many times we're gonna write for oasis tears, which are constituted in a way to mimic the natural tear film. We will also suggest warm compresses applied to the eyelids twice a day, which can improve the ability of the meibomian glands to re release that critical oil layer. Also, a careful evaluation of contributing systemic and environmental factors, such as antihistamines, diuretics, reduced humidity, increased wind or heating, can be identified and potentially mitigated. Category two, 
Inflammation from infections, eyelid vascular congestion, and debris can be treated with prescription medication. These can include a brief course of topical steroids or other medications which work to break the inflammatory cycle by influencing the immune system's activity. Common drugs used include Zydra, Resasis, or Sequa. If you are suffering from evaporative tear loss and have obstructed meibomian glands, many times we will offer intense pulse light therapy. Interestingly, this technology was introduced to ophthalmology as a treatment strategy for a dry eye from the field of dermatology. Patients who were being treated for rosacea on their face were noticing a dramatic improvement in their dry eye symptoms. It turns out the wavelength of light used to break the cycle of inflammation along the eyelids shocks the tear glands into a higher functioning capacity. The recommended treatment cycle varies for each patient, but in general, many patients can get dramatic relief with four sessions spaced apart by a couple of weeks. As a side benefit, a lot of patients notice an improvement in their skin complexion as well. In some cases, patients with decreased tear breakup times can benefit from punctal plugs, which are small silicone tubes that slow the recycling of tears from the normal drainage pathway. Many times we use the analogy that this is similar to clogging the kitchen sink, which allows the eye to be coated in tears for a longer period of time. Category three. In this situation, aggressive management is required as the integrity of the eye itself is at risk. An amniotic membrane may be placed on the eye as it is packed with anti-inflammatory, anti-scarring, and pro-growth factors to jumpstart the healing process. We may prescribe serum tears, which are specialty tears developed from the patient's own blood. The patient reports to a lab, has their blood processed, and then mixed with the typical components of artificial tears. Interestingly, our blood is enriched with many anti-inflammatory growth factors, which can help the ocular surface heal. Finally, in some cases, a torsorophy may be performed, which is a surgical intervention that partially closes the eyelids to prevent the ocular surface from drying out, essentially reducing the amount of surface area that needs to be adequately covered with tears. Thank you for your attention. We hope you found this video informative. If you have any questions or would like to seek treatment in any of the capacities described in this video, we'd be happy to help you. Have a nice day.